think the trilogy of the movie and your description of it just really summarizes the whole experience of the awakening journey is this expansion and forgiveness is just to, you know, seemingly forgiving. What are we forgiving except the past? And, you know, as the mind is expanding and expanding and really just it start to rise above all the past judgment and include everybody in it and let go of the past identification of this limit, this limit self and has a limit context, has a limit relationship and has, has a limit personality and all of that has been washed as we keep following the spirit. That's why we, we keep emphasizing, you know, you can't do this alone with the ego because it's a closed loop. It's, it's this limited construct that, that seems to, you know, be the trap and then to, to get out of it, to expand, we have to, to hold hands with the spirit to get us out of this limited context. So what Kirsten was mentioning as, you know, what we talk a lot is about not drawing conclusions because every conclusion we're drawing is based on all the past learnings. That's what conclusion and decision was really is. How can you draw any conclusion about anything except from the past learning and past experience? And how can that be helpful from being, allowing something else to come in in the awareness, allow the Holy Spirit's voice to be heard in this present moment if we keep holding on the conclusions and judgment from the past? And this I know mentality of, you know, even I know what this grievance is about. I know what this upset is about. You know, and I want to justify the anger because I'm angry because, it's because and because and because. All of that is just conclusions. And as, as soon as we started to say, you know, we don't want to hold on these conclusions and justifications of our upsets. And we're willing to allow something, a new interpretation to come in. Then the mind is starting to rise above all of that. And just keep happening and keep happening as we follow the spirit, you know, along step by step. That's exactly as as you're describing, you know, just rise above and grow and expand. That all this past identification just is forgiven, is gone. Yeah, it's like forgiveness is quiet and still and actually does nothing. Forgiveness is a is a presence, it's a state of mind. That it reminds the mind that what it looks upon is false. So, in that practice of seeing where the mind <coughs> thinks it knows what the problem is and then goes about trying to forgive it, forgiveness is in the seeing of that. Oh, I've gripped on. I think I know what it is, and now I'm going to try to find a practice or a process to go into it. It's in the releasing of it. Is the just make a decision for forgiveness. And we also can't discount the importance of self-inquiry. Like, you know, the whole course is is helping the mind that needs forgiveness to become very aware of the ego's thought patterns. Um, you become aware of false empathy so that you can recognize it and then choose no, not that. And you become aware of the unhealed healer become aware of what an unforgiven thought does. You know. So there's so much learning in the course about, about the ego to be able to then recognize it and see it and no longer follow its ways. But yeah, forgiveness just becomes more and more of just a natural response of the mind to go, oh, you know, it's more of, it starts to move in the direction of holding on and as soon as that movement is recognized, becomes more and more natural to, to just not go there anymore, not even pretend to think that you know what it is, because you realize that you don't. You know, the not knowing is just very natural. Because forgiveness does apply to everything. It's not just the upset that we're trying to forgive. And it's not just the people and situation that is upsetting us. The things that gives us pleasure needs to be forgiven. Everything in this world that we think we know, we have a conclusion about, 
needs to be forgiven so that we can be released from this identification with, with, this, identi uh, with this seeming perceiver and perceive an outside world. So everything comes into the scope of forgiveness and so we keep talking about not drawing conclusion because that's a wider, you know, it's not just limited to upsets, but that can be a starting point, but it can, you know, cross the board to everything, every conclusions that we make in our mind. We need to pay attention to that. Yeah, there's, there's prayers in the Course, there's steps that are given, there's practicalities, and that meets the mind where it believes it is. It believes it's a person in time and space. So it gets a workbook with 365 lessons that seem to be a context that the mind can relate to. You know, the spirit isn't just like, get over it. You know, it's like, oh, here, try this. It's not working, try this. That's not working. Well, here, then try this. You know? And it's like the, there's a lightful, playful feeling of the spirit. Like, did you get it yet? Okay, we'll try this one. Did you get it? Okay, we'll try this one. Did you get it? You know, it's just that playful kind of sense. Nothing over us, not 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 being scolded or demanded or you know, like there's some kind of test master above us. And even these steps, you know, a lot of times teachers will try to boil the course down into these five basic steps, or three basic steps, or two basic steps. You can't take forgiveness, and you ultimately can't shrink forgiveness down to a formula. Because the formula, eventually you will have to practice whatever formula works for you to a point that you spring into presence. The Christian was talking about, and Francis's presence that sees the false as false. That's as simple as it is. We talked a little bit about, um, I mentioned somebody uh, recently about ordering of thoughts and hierarchies of illusions and preferences. We get into all these subtle things. You know, you can't take the course and you can't break it down to a few cliches. You know, like cliches like, the course is telling you you not to judge, but it's okay to have preferences, it's okay to, you know, enjoy yourself in this world and so on and so forth, but just don't judge, just don't condemn. When you go much deeper into what forgiveness is, it's telling you that even the preferences of nuances that you seem to have as a human being are all judgments. They're all judgments. Like the, the pleasureful ones, the good judgments are just as harmful to your peace of mind as the bad judgments. You know, we've had teachings that say, accentuate the positive, eliminate the negative, as if that will actually get us back to God by accentuating the positive and eliminating the negative. When we start to realize, the Course is telling us that our positive judgments are just as detrimental as our negative judgments. That's a deep teaching. You know, this isn't your entry level. This is getting into enlightenment teachings. The dreams you think you like, Jesus says, can hold you back as much as those in which the fear is entered. Wow. Whoa. We're talking Christ presence now. This isn't your entry level spirituality. This is dive. An invitation to dive down deep and to know who you are, know thyself. So, you know, it, it takes it beyond kind of trying to take the course and fit it into your human world. Like, I study the course. It's almost like, I'm an alcoholic. Hi, my name is so-and-so, I'm an alcoholic. You can do that for years, it may help you break out of the denial and oppression. If you, oh no, I've got no problem. No problem, guzzle, guzzle, no problem. You know, you see where that mechanism of identifying it and saying, Hi, my name is so-and-so and I'm an alcoholic, is the first step in admitting you've got a problem that needs to be addressed. You, you're not just going to gloss it over. But then you go deeper into, you have to go beyond being a course student who's using this book, who still has this personal individual identity, 
Because eventually, even the Course in Miracles students, the ego will go, okay, if we have to hang on to that one, we'll just hang on. <laughs> just hang on for dear life. <laughs> You're a Course student. So. You know, we're going to die, of course, students, you know, years of, you know, it's, the ego will try to latch on to anything of this world that would prevent you from knowing yourself as the Christ. Even Course of Miracles students, it will grab onto that concept. Or Course of Miracles teacher, you know, you, it'll go, okay, if you're going to have to be a, a teacher of God, then let's make it a good career and let's make it lucrative. <laughs> you know, come on. If I've got, okay, if you have to go this far, then you go out, pretend to be a course teacher, and make a good, successful living. Have a good life in this world with the teachings. You see how the ego will try to latch on to anything to keep you from waking up and remembering who you are. So your goal isn't to become known, or popular, or famous. Your goal isn't to be well respected by people and bodies, your goal is to wake up to who you are, to have no affiliations, to have no past associations that would hold you back from that glorious final experience of, of who you are. That's what the, the whole plan is designed just for one realization. And then the world holds nothing that to, to want or to, to go after at that point. When you know who you are, where is the world? Gone. <laughs> Gone from the mind. Never really was there anyway, but it seems like it's, it's gone for good. <laughs>